Hey, Mike with Mike's Bags, and today I am reviewing the Knockout by Gnarly Bags. Let's go ahead and dive in. We'll break this bag down. We'll start with the materials. We'll start with slow side. This is a familiar material. This is that linen material. It's the same slow side you find on the Psycho X, Widow X, Rails Victory, B3 Justice, Chronographics Nympho. Uh, pretty much every company out there has their bag that uses this material on there. If you've thrown bags for any period of time, you've probably thrown a bag with this material. It's a, it's a very versatile material. I'm going to call it a five-speed. This material is very reactive to board conditions, so weather conditions. So it, it really fluctuates a lot in speed depending on conditions. You know, when when boards are fast, this can play like a six or seven speed. When there's humidity and the boards are damp with moisture, it'll play like a one or two. It just doesn't move. Normal boards, dry boards, I'm gonna say a five speed. It's kind of about where it settles at. Fast side. This it took me a while to figure this out. When I first got this back, I kept looking at this fast. I go, I don't know what this is. I don't recognize this. I don't think I've ever seen this material before in my life. And then, you know, and then I, I started digging through some fabric samples that I have and realized I've seen this material. I've just never seen this side of the material. So this is the same material you find on the BG Witcher, the Cornhole Coastal Creature, the B3 Fatal, Coyote Ranger. It's the same material as the fast side of those bags, but it's flipped over and this is the other side of that material. It's, uh, it normally calls it an eight speed. I, I'm fine with an eight, maybe even be a touch faster, right? So we're going to eight and nine. And once you get to that eight, nine, 10 speed, whatever speed bags, the board, the backs of the board, they just fall out the back. It's really hard to really nail down those speeds. And being the first time I've thrown some material, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to say somewhere between an eight and a nine on speed wise. It's plenty fast for, for pushing through congestion, for collecting bags. If you've got multiple bags up there, you can push through it. It's plenty fast to do it. I really like the way the, the, the this side of the material plays. If you're familiar with the fast of the materials, you know that material is really kind of really kind of thin, pliable. It's softer. This side is a little more textured to it. Not quite as soft, but a little more textured. So you get a little more grip to the bag when you hold your hand and there's some grip there. I, I you know, I, I like the way the materials feel. I think these two materials play really well together because they're both really thin, pliable materials. I, yeah, I like the combination of the materials. I was really I was really impressed with it. I like the way the bag's played with it with those materials. Template wise, it's a medium template bag. It is a fuller bag. It's not very thin and not very floppy. There's plenty of fill in here, so you're not gonna get a whole lot of flops. So if you don't like a floppy bag, this knockout's a great option for you. It, the fill here is a mixed fill. There's a good variety of different size beads in here. There's some flat fill in here as well. It, it, I love the, I love this on this bag. I, if you've watched my videos any bit at all, you know I love a mixed fill. It's kind of one of my favorite fills. I even, I even lean towards more bead than more flat fill. I just I like the the whole friendness you get of a of a bead fill and a mixed fill. And this bag is no exception. Like it's really plays great around the hole. I love that. The one, and then the other side, hand feel. This bag being fuller, you get a great hand feel. You get a lot of beads to grip a hold of. You can lock this bag. Yeah, I feel like once I grab this bag, I have total control. There's no movement in the bag. I can do what I want to with it. The one trade-off I would say is for those of you who like a flat feel, especially if you like that flat disc feel, you like that fluid hand feel, really smooth hand feel. And a bag like this, you might feel some of the, if you grab it just right, sometimes you might feel a few of the beads, a few of the chunks, because these this materials are a little thinner. Sometimes you can feel the, the beads poke through, just, just a hair. And honestly, I'm, I'm nitpicking here. But I do want to say, if you if you don't like that at all, maybe you don't want to try this bag. But for me, what you gain around the hole and hole fullness is well worth what little bit of a difference in the hand feel. Now, honestly, I don't have a problem with it. Like, I grab it. I, I didn't have an issue. I didn't ever feel like when I was throwing this bag that I could pick it up and go, man, that feels weird. Never had that issue. And like, I love the, because of the fullness, I love the way the bag feels in the hand. Like, I grip a hold of it. I feel like I have total control of the bag. So, at least me the playability on this. And this is a bag that's, that's, that's I'm going to call it versatile. It's versatile in the sense that Depending on board conditions, you can play different styles of games. I, I don't know if you're really going to change. Like on faster boards, you're, you're, you're running bags in the hole. Right? If boards are fast, you're running bags in the hole. Because this is going to play like a six or seven speed. It's going to be hard to control, hard to throw blockers with it. As boards get more to a normal speed, then you start playing a little bit of a both. You know, some blockers you can play. You can still run bags in the hole. As boards get stickier and slow down, eventually it's going to come to a point where it's not playable. But for normal board conditions, you can, you know, you can still run bags in the hole with this. And this material really, I, I'll start kind of on the negative side. There's three main negatives to this linen material. And I, I talk about, every time I talk about anything that uses this bag or this material on any bag that uses them, it's not just this knockout material. It's any bag that uses the linen material. You've got... The, the one is the the humidity, right? Boards get damp, sticky from humidity. It's You can't play with it. Two is this bag, this material does have some kick to it, right? So if you don't throw a perfectly flat bag, the bag's going to kick on you if you have a little bit of tilt to it. And you mix in this bead fill, which gives the bag a little bit of bounce, a little bit of movement. It's going to kick a little more. So if you're not... If you're not a flat bag thrower, you're going to have to deal with a little bit of a kick. Now, as long as you're consistent, if you've got a tilt in your bag, but you consistently throw the same tilt, it's a pretty consistent kick. So you can you can adjust and you can play that. And if you if you deal with that, you've probably learned how to adjust your with your kick anyway. A lot of bags will do that to you. The kick does mean this bag is very is very cuttable. Right? You you can you can you I can cut bags. I, I can throw this up there. I can really place it like a carpet bag. I can cut this, shape shots around bags. Uh, you know this this with this 
bead fill, this bouncy, a little bit of a bounce, a little movement to it. It's definitely a bag that you're rolling, flop, and you can you can really shape shots. And because it's it's fuller, I feel like you know you have total control. I could I could cut bags right to left, left to right. I can really make this bag do what I wanted to do. I really love the way the control I had over the bag. The third thing negative I'd say is that this material has a tendency to want to hang on the hole typically. Now, because this has a lot of beads in the fill here, I didn't have as big of an issue with that. Like I felt like the beads kind of helped counteract the, the this material wanting to hang on the hole. And when bags were hanging, because it's fuller like this, it was very easy to throw another bag in and just clip it and it would go in. I didn't have to get crazy and, and, and do something aggressive or something, you know, uh, uh, stupid to try to collect the bags. It's like the bag was hanging there, enough bag was there, I could clip it and take it right in. Uh, the, the other thing I'll say as far as negativity maybe is because the bags are fuller and there's not a lot of flop to them, it, the forgiveness, when you know, when I talk about landing zones or bags and, and, and you know, the, the larger floppier bags with wider landing zones, smaller fuller have have a smaller landing zone. This is probably more, this is closer to like a fuller carpet bag type landing zone. It, you know, if you're off left or right, it's it's not as great about grabbing that hole and spinning in. If I got enough of the bag to get over the hole, it would dip in. But if just a corner over there, it doesn't, that corner doesn't dip in like I want to because it is a fuller bag. It's not that floppy. That corner's not dipping in. However, because the bag I had, I had was full as it is, I could grab it and I can control it. I didn't have as many bags off center as I would maybe have with a floppier bag. So, you know, you know, you're losing some of that forgiveness around the hole, but you're gaining more control of the bag. So you don't need as much of that forgiveness. Does that make sense? So I, you know, I, I didn't really seem like that was as big of an issue. I think there were times the bags kind of skipped over that, that a little bit floppier bag would have caught and pulled itself back in or whatever, where this didn't. But like I said, I was able to shape shots with this more than I would with the floppier bag. And, and I like to shape shots. I like to have control of the bag. Again, I'm willing to make that trade off. Cornhole, you know, cornhole bags are a zero sum game all the time. If you're gaining in one area, you're losing somewhere else. If you lose an area, you're probably gaining somewhere else. And that's what's going on. You know, you've got you've got to find the trade-off and find the balance of what fits your game, what fits your style. What are you willing to sacrifice to gain what you want to gain? You know, or what areas do you not care about? And you can you can cut those back to gain the other areas you do care about. And that's what you gotta do when you're when you're when you're assessing a cornhole bag for yourself is what's the most important aspect for you? Is it is it hand feel? Is it is it the fact that it doesn't kick? Is it is it the ability to shape shots, cut and roll and flop? Is it whole for this? What matters the most to you? And that's where you start assessing what bags you need. And, and so in this case, you know, I've got a ton of control with this bag. I can shape shots. I can manipulate it. I can cut shots. I can do what I want with this bag in my hand. But I also lose a little bit of that of that forgiveness around the hole by 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 gaining where I gain there. And so just trying to, I hope that, I hope I'm explaining that well to you and that makes sense to you. But, but all in all, I love the way the bag played. I had no issues with it. As far as bags hanging or if I'm throwing blockers too as well, I, the, this bag being as full as this, very easy to collect. It didn't take much at all to come down, clip a corner and take these bags in because they're not big and floppy. They don't accordion up. You just, you just touch a corner, right? If I, if I got a bag, especially fast side, I come down, I'm just clipping it and taking it and pushing right through. I had no problems collecting these bags. So I, I was very confident throwing blockers up there, even throwing blockers more aggressively over my opponent's side. And I didn't have to put them right in the middle. I could get a little more on their side, a little more in their way. And I knew I could throw a bag. I didn't have to get crazy. Even if the bag was on their side, I just come right to the middle, clip it, and I could take both bags in with no problem whatsoever. And so I, I love having that confidence and knowing I have the control to put the bag over there and then knowing I have the ability to collect the bag without having to do something crazy. Just a regular bag down the middle would take that bag in. And these bags are sticky enough on normal boards or slow boards that it will cause some bags to kick off if your opponent's not good at pushing through. Faster boards, you're probably not putting a blocker there. If you do, it's not that hard to, to push right through it. But all in all, I love the way these knockouts played. I really had it, I really had fun throwing them. I think you will as well. So if you're looking for a bag, it, it, to me, this is a bag that if you're a carpet bag thrower and you're looking for a faster bag, you're looking to get out of the carpet bag world, this is a great option because it has it has a lot of the characteristics of a carpet bag. You have that fullness, you have the control, you can still play the same carpet style game, but you've got a little bit of a faster bag. So I think that's where this bag would fit in is if is if you're a carpet bag thrower, but you're looking for a faster bag, you're looking for another option. Maybe you're looking for a bag when you go to blind draws, you don't have opponents or you don't have partners that want to throw carpet all the time. And you need a bag that you can pull out where you can still play your your dirty game, your shot shaping game, but they can still play their run in the hole. But you know they can still run bags in the hole on their side. This may be a great option for that to to, to check out and give it a try. It leads me to availability on these, and Gnarly has a website, Gnarly GnarlyWoodcrafts.com. I hope I got that right. I'll put a link in the description just to make sure I got that right. But GnarlyWoodcrafts.com. The bags are eighty bucks for a set plus shipping, which is like I think it's nine fifty shipping, so eighty nine fifty shipped to you, which is a great deal. Especially I don't know if I mentioned these are ACL Pro Stamp for twenty twenty four, so ACL stamp bags. For ninety less than ninety bucks, shipped to you is a, is a, is on the cheaper side of bags. They're great bags. I love the way they plays I played. I think you will as well. So if you're looking for you know if you're looking for a little bit of a you know five eight five nine speed bag, 
and you like a little fuller bag or something a little less flop, I really think you ought to give these knockouts a try. If you've thrown them, I'd love to hear your feedback, whether you like them or not, what you like, what you don't like. I always love to hear your guys' opinions. I thank you guys so much for support, and I thank you for watching.